better than rivalry week in the Pac-10, and there is none better than the Apple Cup. It divides the state of Washington between Cougars and Huskies, and today the sixth-ranked Huskies invade Pullman to take on the Washington State Cougars. Hello, everyone. I'm Bud Damick in Martin Stadium. Great to have you with us, and thanks to Oregon State. The Washington Huskies with a chance to advance to the Rose Bowl with a win in this rivalry game over the Cougars, but it is a rivalry game. That means just about anything can happen. Last year in Seattle, the Huskies were able to outlast the Washington State Cougars. Then freshman Paul Arnold with an 80-yard scamper that broke the backs of the Washington State Cougars and got the Huskies out the shoot in a hurry. And then it was razzle-dazzle time to solidify the Husky win. Marcus Tuiasasopo to Dane Looker. That was a lateral. This is a pass to Joe Jarzenka for the touchdown that iced it for the dogs, and they get the victory. They're 59th in this heated rivalry. 59 wins for the dogs. There have been 27 for the Cougars. Six ties. There will be no more. Since the games have moved back to Pullman from Spokane in 1982, the Cougs are four and five against the dogs here and hoping that they can knot things up with a win today here in Pullman. It should be a fun football game. And what better way to set the tone than to have two comrades join me, former quarterbacks, Cleet Casper from Washington State, Sonny Sixkiller from the University of Washington. Well, Sonny, this should be a fun one today. We've got two quarterbacks that are on both ends of the spectrum. Marcus Tuiasasopo, seasoned vet, Matt Kegel, new guy in town. <laughs> well, new guy with the big bloodlines going to Ryan Leaf, what everybody knows. And, you know, Cleet, before this game's over, Huskies and Cougars will miss and appreciate watching a guy like Marcus Tuiasasopo compete on the field. No, oh, he's been a great one. He's been fun to watch. I don't want to see him anymore, though, <laughs> bud. So we'll be right back up to you and as fast as we can get there. The folks having fun here in Martin Stadium. Apple Cup 2000 next on Fox Sports Net. John Anderson's going to kick it off as the Cougars won the toss. It is a high, very short kick that is going to sail out of bounds. So the Cougars will have the football on their own 35-yard line to get things started. And the young man out of Haver, Montana, will make his second consecutive start. He is Matt Kegel, 6'5", 225-pounder, 28 of 63. 413 yards, the 88-yard touchdown pass to Marcus Williams last week. And his only touchdown pass, no interceptions. Wynn and Williams are big on the outside. Meisen is the tight end. Dave Minnick will be the running back for the Cougars as they'll start from the 35. The offensive line is very young. Watch Tyler Hunt in the middle. He will have to battle against Larry Triplett, the outstanding Nose tackle for the Washington Huskies. First down from the 35, this is Adam Hawkins, the senior who gets the start at running back and gets a couple of yards for Washington State. Take a look now at the Husky defense. They are led by that 3-4 front. Jerome Stevens getting the start over Marcus Roberson, who's banged up a bit. Triplet in the middle, Ryan Julian on the outside. The linebackers are Jeremiah Farms, Ben Madavi, the former walk-on, Daryl Daniels, and Jafar Williams. Actually, Anthony Kelly getting the start in place of Williams today. Low and Massey at the corners. Akbar Carruthers as the Cougars have some problems on the snap, and Matt Kegel is sacked back at the 25-yard line. So not the way Washington State has things scripted. And they will face a third and long. So Kegel tackled behind the line of scrimmage, and the Cougars now face a third and 17 from the 28-yard line. Not something they have on the script right here. They'll have to come up with a big play to keep their initial drive alive. Matt Kegel going to change the play call. I don't think he's going to get snapped in time. He does not. Delay of game against Washington State. So it'll be third and 22 now for Washington State. Not the kind of start that Washington State was looking to, as we talked about in pregame, of uh, trying to play under control and execute. And 
Mike Price is just making sure that Matt Kegel doesn't get too upset with things and recognizes maybe now it's just a time to punt. Third and 22 from the 23 yard line. Cougs have to get out near midfield to get the first down. And they're going to play it safe, hand it off to Hawkins, and he's dropped for a loss. So the Cougars get a positive two yards on their first play, and after that, they go backwards. Well, you know, Cleet, you and I talked about defenses, how they can sometimes, you talked about the big play, but so far the Huskies seem to be fired up on the defensive side. Mike Price talking to his young quarterback on the sidelines, and you can see Matt Kegel a little excited. Alan Cox on to punt for the first time, averaging 38 yards per kick. To Ray Butler, back deep for the dogs. Cox gets off a nice kick, a high hanging driving spiral. Butler the catch, and he'll get some room outside, gets a couple of blocks, and finally down in Cougar territory. Well, to Ray Butler, the senior from Everett, nice return. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, the sunset of an outstanding career. 11 touchdown passes, almost 2,000 yards so far this year. Braxton Clement gets the start of tailback. Conniff is the fullback. He could play a big factor in this game. Elstrom, the big receiver. The line is huge. Averages 314 pounds a man. First down Huskies at the Cougar 43. Tui's first pass is caught. Justin Robbins, first down Huskies. Quick start for Mr. Tuiasa Sopo. A look at the Cougar defense. Matson, Ryan Long, Kagaika, and Shavies up front. Melvin Camarena, a senior in on the first series as well. The linebackers, Price, Champ Simmons, and Randall Smith. Smith will have the duty of trying to watch Jeremy Stevens. And the secondary, Martin is the senior, as is Maury Banks, Newman, and Marcus Trufant. First down, Huskies at the 30. Looks like Marcus is checking up. He sees Banks on the outside, top of your screen. Hit from behind, falls loose. I think Tuiasa Sopo covered it. Turnovers could be a factor in this game. The Huskies are minus three. The Cougars are minus one in turnovers. Boy, big break for Washington there. That ball is on the ground in the feet. And Tuiasa Sopo, even though he's wrapped up, look, Smith coming off of the corner. Tuiasa Sopo doesn't see him until it's way too late. The ball comes popping loose, and it's just right down in his feet, and he's in the grasp of Randall Smith and still able to fall on that football. So a great job by Tuiasa Sopo to fall back on it. But that was a huge play. There you see Randall Smith's numbers, and he's really come on here in the latter part of this season for the Cougars. Second down, 13 for the Dogs. They've yet to run it. They'll run the option. Big hole. Craxton Clemen knocked out of bounds by Billy Newman. Clement from Oroville, Washington, gets a first down for the Huskies. Well, you know, Clee, what happens on this option play, the Huskies run four or five different methods of running it. Right there, you see it more of a veer action with Pat Conniff going out to get Melvin Simmons and Braxton Clement, who got all the work in practice this week, and turned it up right there. And the Huskies need that out of a running back who hasn't played much this year. Nice block by Pat Conniff coming out and just clipping Champ Simmons' legs. Champ's got to fill in that hole in that lane, but Huskies executed quite well. Huskies in the red zone. Cougars showing blitz. Now they back away. Tuiasa Sopo dropped. Wilbur hooks. Couldn't get his hooks on it. Well, one of the interesting cat and mouse games, uh, Cougar dog games we're going to have here today is the Cougar defense coming up, showing blitz, trying to get Marcus to check out of running plays, get him to get out of those options, because the one thing that screws up an option is a secondary guy coming up to the line of scrimmage, and you can out maneuver things and maybe force Marcus to go to the passing game. And you see on a cold day, it's tough to catch it sometimes. That one dimensional thing we were talking about. Huskies have been efficient in the red zone. They scored 37 of the 41 times they've made it inside the 20. They face second and 10 here. Tui gets it away. Billy Newman almost with the interception and a whole lot of open space in front of him. And you can see his reaction. Well, I tell you, Tui Asasopo is very lucky, Cleet. That time, Maury Banks coming from the free safety position, putting the pressure on him. And we'll see it come right up the middle, actually from the corner, Cleet. And that ball's thrown behind Jeremy and, and Billy Newman's got to make that play. That's two times that the Cougars have had opportunities for 
Big turns on the turnovers. And that one just goes to the ground. Cold weather, though. It's, it's tough to put your meat hooks on that football. Big third down play. Crowd getting into it. Martin Stadium. Here come the Cougars. Tuiasa Sopa, room to roam. He was over the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball. There's a flag. Yep. Not going to count. Tui's celebrating, but it's going to come back. They'll lose the down. That might take them out of field goal range. Husky Bands, little members down there watching that play at the end zone, but this is all going to come back because he just stepped over. Looked like about the 19-yard line is where he let that ball fly. He stepped over the line, then he pulled back, and that's what cost him. Yeah, he realized where he was, guys, but he tried to correct it, but once you go over... Cougars lose contain a little bit and on the outside as the officials discuss things, but uh, Tui Asasopo using his great footwork, they may wave this off. No penalty. The play was legal by rule. We're not able to hear the wow. call, but... I think that's a bad call. He was definitely past the 19 and then stepped back and threw it. And as Sonny said, you can't do that. Take a look. Here we're going to see pressure comes up the middle of the football field and is forcing Tui Asasopo out of the pocket. The line of scrimmage is the 19-yard line. There he is on the 19. He's at the 18. Right? And lets it go. And uh, I'm not exactly sure. And they sure. call it a touchdown, Huskies. Wow. Mike Price trying to get his guys pumped up, but uh, that's a controversial start to this football game because, like you said, they would have moved him back uh, from the line of scrimmage. Would have put him on third and 20. Instead, they got six. Anderson to try to add on the extra point. Flag on the extra point that is no good. Anderson has missed three prior to that one. Let's see what the flag is. We'll sort it out when we come back. Huskies with a controversial 6-0 lead over the Cougars. This time, Anderson will drill it. It'll be caught by Curtis Nettles at the goal line. He might have a little running room. He's got Billy Newman as an escort out front. Cougars allow pretty decent field position. See if they can do something with it. They'll say he was out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Looks like the 39 there, bud. Okay, spot it back. So see if Matt Kegel's a little more composed this time around and the Cougars get something going. Cleet Casper, they still on the script? Yeah, they're still on the script. They only got a couple plays off, and one of them didn't even come to fruition, which was the trap, the counter trap action that Mike would really like to run against this very aggressive Husky front. They've got Minnick in the backfield now. Kegel trying to set something up outside, just throws it away. Colin Henderson broke, went inside. Kegel threw it outside as the pressure came. There's Rick Neuheisel. Second year Husky coach. Cougs go to the two tight end alignment with Minnick in the backfield on second and ten. Kegel guns it out. It is caught out to the 45 yard line. Milton win. Closing in on a thousand yard season. Well, it was a pretty good coverage out there actually on the short route. Uh, Chris Massey starting in place of Anthony Von Tour this afternoon. And a lot of young people back there, you guys. You know, Chris Massey's one of them, and Johnson is another. But this man is a scary receiver. Milton Wynn is tough. Well, here's a big third down and four for Kegel and the Coots. They spread it out, doubles them both, bottom and top. Minnick the lone back. Want to set the swing to Minnick. He makes the catch, one man to beat, and he got the first down. In the Husky territory. Was able to elude Omari Love, 
Cougar was coming up, had a chance to make the hit and stop the Cougars on this drive, but it is a first down. These are the kind of pass plays Mike wants to give to Matt Kegel. Just the little four or five yard out with Milton Wynn and then throw something nice over here and let your big strong running back pick up the first down, do it on his own. He had one man to beat and got it done. So that's a big pickup. First down at the Husky 49, Minnick up the gut. Pretty good little surge on the right side of the line and he'll get down to about the 45 yard line. Awesome Haddam out of Mead High School in Spokane in on the stop. A little extracurricular apple cup activity. Flags fly, let's see if it goes against each player or if the officials are going to say someone started it. Well, you gotta be careful because you don't wanna interrupt any momentum that you got in regards to Cougar offense. You'd hate to get set back. Hopefully they'll just say, dead guys, uh, take it to neutral corner. Personal foul against the defense, dead ball. Personal foul against the offense. <laughs> the smart thing to do in this step. type of game. Saw Billy Chase and uh, Omari Lowe exchanging little uh, face mask uh, rearrangement out there, Cleet. <laughs> <laughs> little, little fashion design. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad to see the official having the, uh, I don't know why Kegel's lining up his offense three yards from the ball to call the huddle, but uh, maybe a version of the hurry up offense. He wants to get him up there quickly. <laughs> if I was Larry Triplett, I would have leaned in and listened there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Offensive lineman turned around to run the line of scrimmage and said, hey, we're here already. You can move. Was it set? No. Cougars a little disrupted there in the entire play calling sequence, having the huddle two yards from the from the ball and then going out and trying to get set. And that's something that'll happen with an excitable young quarterback. But pushes the football back to midfield. Kegel comes over to get the play call from Mike Price. Huskies on top, six nothing. Nine. 47 and counting. Not quite a sellout here at Martin Stadium. A lot of the fans decided it was a little too cold. They're going to watch it on TV. Dave Minnick running around. Minnick still free. Down to the 30 yard line. Well, you two talked about needing to establish a running game, and the Cougs have done that so far. Well, what the, like, the Huskies like to do is come up with a lot of pressure and get people up the field. Cougars come out and just create that one little seam. That's all you see. Madavi being held a little bit there. <laughs> a little. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that one is ignored by the officials also. As you see the big Marine punching it out. That's the kind of running game on a cold, crisp day that you're going to want to establish. It's good to see him hold on to the football, too. First down at the Husky 30. Minnick will offset now. Eagle will roll to find some time. Looks for Milton Wynn. Threw a two-tall interceptor. Huskies, the beneficiary of the turnover is Chris Massey. The freshman comes up with his first interception as a dog. Well, thanks to Matt Kegel, Cleet. Now, that one, he had a man wide open and overthrows his receiver. I'd like to be the recipient of some of those overthrows if I was a DB. Well, just a, a physical mistake here by Matt. He has the corner, gets help from Minnick, and there's Milton Wynn. He's got to lob it over the top of Kelly and uh, got in there somewhere between a, a line drive and a, and a lob. Look at this, Massey with the turnover. Almost looked like he was intended to throw it to win and then saw Williams open deep in the end zone and tried to goose it at the last minute well, and ended up with in between. It looked like he tried to finesse it a little too much on that one. Huskies with it at the 20, Tui changing the play call. Gonna run it to the big fullback, Connor, who gets four yards. Well, they've been doing this a lot since high school and through their collegiate career. Those two young men know how to mesh themselves real well. There's a look at Massey. Good looking redshirt freshman. Pat Connor's been banged up a little bit all year, along with the rest of the running core. Second and about six. Marcus Tuias Sobel facing a five six man line now uh, versus the Cougars. Looks like he's checking off again. Option. Clement trying to get outside. Not much there. Might have got a yard. That's the kind of thing Bill Dova's looking to do is force Marcus on that option to pitch it early and bet that although Clemens is a pretty good back, that his guys, meaning Billy Newman, Randall Smith, uh, have the speed to go from inside out and track him down to that sideline. That's pretty good defense there, Coach Dova. One of the best at defense in the option. 
third and call it four for the dogs. They converted for a touchdown on their only third down earlier. Pressure, Tuyas Sopo gets it away, and they've got the first down. Big Jeremy Stevens makes the catch. Well, that's a, certainly a target I would look for. He's had great success this season, finding number big 14, and it's nice when you know where the first down marker is, too, Cleet. As a quarterback, you want your tight end getting enough for the first down. Cougars come with uh, Randall Smith, who doesn't get a chip on big Jeremy Stevens before he runs out in the route, and that's just a nice, easy little throw. That catch moves him one ahead of Todd Heap of Arizona State. First down, Dogs at the 32. Deep drop by Tui. Incomplete. Marcus Trufant did a nice job that time. As soon as the ball was delivered to Elstrom, Trufant delivered the hit. I thought Tui took a little too long to deliver the football. He had enough time to set his feet and get it out there. Elstrom had already broken his route off, and you need to make sure that ball's gone by the time they plant guys and come back. That ball should be out of the hands. Coach Neuheisel watching with interest. Also knows what that score of that Oregon State game was. Another audible by Tui Asasopo. Little movement on the line by the Huskies. Big Elliott Silvers rocked back a little too soon. How good's this offensive line been all year, Sonny? They've been real solid. I think that they really Ball start on the offense. Five yards penalty, still second down. We've got several rushers, you know, make that century mark, and I think that uh, uh, they've done an excellent job of blocking on the option plays and creating and making sure that Marcus can get outside. Uh, the one thing is that uh, there's one junior. Everybody else is a senior. Kyle Ben being the only junior on the front. Delay handoff. Braxton Clement with a pretty good surge and some six, seven yards after the contact. Young man out of Orville going to set up a third and pretty good situation for the Huskies compared to what it might have been. Well, here's what Coach Dobo was real concerned with, these delayed draws. Looks like Hart is that fullback in there making a good block, and uh, Clemens does a nice job picking four or five up afterwards, but he was real concerned with the ability of these big guys to punch holes in the middle of the Cougar football defense. Third and four now. Look for Stevens in this situation last time. Little option. Cougs have Clement hemmed in. He's going to lose three yards. Huskies are going to have to punt it away. Another flag on the field. Mike Price looking at that, trying to figure out what the what the officials are talking about. They're talking to Maury Banks on the side there, and uh, it looks like the way the Cougars' helmets are heading to the turf that it's against the Cougars in a big play. Well, the official was pointing his hand at Chris Martin, 25. Looked like uh, trying to read some lips Dead there. Ball. Personal foul, defense, 15 yards, first down. Boy, oh, that's a killer. You know, you got to get up for these football games, but you got to play with somewhat of a level head. You can't kill your teams with penalties. Uh, especially after you've stopped them on third down. Here you see the activities, and there's a shot by Jeremy Stevens, then another shot by uh, Chris Martin after the fact. And, uh, you know, the second guy got caught. <laughs> it always happens. It's just a, a truism. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, it's a little, little brain dead activity. So, first down, Dogs. They're at the Cougar 49 now. Clemens the lone setback. They'll try option. Pretty good first down gain. Cougs again forcing Tuias Sopo to have to pitch it early. Looked like Cougs are in pretty good position here. Again, the crash coming down by Isaac Brown. Going to make Tuias Sopo feel it at least. Looks like there's some chance by Champ Simmons to make a play in the lane, but uh, good running again by Clement. Yeah, Isaac Brown took him down well, and uh, Tui, I think, is bigger than Isaac Brown. Second and six from the 45 for the Dogs. They'll try it up the gut. I'm going to bounce it outside. Pretty good surge and push, and depending on the spot, may have a first down. 
One thing about Braxton Clement, he hasn't had a lot of reps this year carrying a football, but he's very strong below the waist. He's got powerful legs, and today, so far, he's using them. Let's go down to the sidelines to Todd Pickett. Thanks, Bud. Glad to be with you. This is a very firm turf today uh, with the chill, but it's the one that the runners will be able to cut back on rather easily. It's also a familiar turf for the Husky runners. Field turf, same as at Husky Stadium. In fact, they're so used to it that Rick Neuheisel didn't even have a walkthrough on Friday. Said there's nothing for us to learn about the footing. But Todd, thank you much. Mike Price watching as the Huskies have another first down, this time at the 38 of Washington State. This time it's the big fullback, Conniff, and he lumbers his way to a first down for the dogs. Pat Conniff, we talked about the dive play as a feature in this option. And watch this, Cleet. Good block. You'd asked about the offensive line. You see West call out in front. A little missed tackle there by a man you wouldn't expect that from, Billy Newman. Huskies, the best rushing team in the Pac-10, and so far, they've run it pretty well here this afternoon, 49 yards, and they're on the move on this drive. Play fake, Tui to throw. Elstrom inside the 10. She fought the tackle, but it's first and goal dogs. Nice route by Elstrom there as watching him go down sell the post and then break it back out to the outside. Marcus Trufant loses his footing a bit and the play action now that the running game has started to come into fruition is starting to open up the passing game but that's just a nice throw and catch. Elstrom with an excellent route. Nine yards away from being a very expensive personal foul on Washington State. Another audible by Tuiasa Sopo. Conniff. Falls forward for a couple. <laughs> I'm surprised he picked up a couple, but it <laughs> looked like he was going to go anywhere. Good job by the Cougar defense to keep your eye on 47. Well, last week against UCLA, he got in the end zone twice, so you imagine after watching the tape, you'd be a little bit alerted to the fact that 47 can rumble. Trying to get the Cougars to over pursue with that fake pitch and hand it back. See if they come with the option. It's really effective down here, especially when you're running the corners off with man-to-man -man coverage. And the dog fans in the end zone that the Huskies are trying to get into. Has a man wide open in the flat. Let's not throw it right now. Two directed traffic. Is it a catch? They say no. Braxton Clement almost made a wonderful catch in the corner of the end zone. There's a flag on the play. Spot where you might anticipate a defensive hold. Let's see. Could have been a late hit on Marcus Tuyasa Sopo as well as he was over near that sideline. Jim Fogeltance and crew talking it over. Ineligible. Some of the big guys thinking that Marcus is going to try to roll that in himself as he has done so often this year. He elects to pull up and float one into the corner. Okay. Braxton Clement. The penalty is a loss of down to be third down. That's expensive. Clemens is forced out of bounds, comes in to try to make a play. Here you see two, he's going to get forced outside. Tupo Tupo, not able to keep contained. Surprised that Marcus doesn't roll this one in and try to run it. You see that just out of the reach. We couldn't really find the infraction on Clemens, but the official's right there, so one goes against the dog. Third and goal from the six. Caught out of bounds, I believe. No, touchdown, Huskies. Cougars can't believe it. Well, the two officials took their time. Didn't see any head nodding. You, you didn't know who was going to make a call. Right there in the corner, we'll have to take a look. But Marcus puts this ball right on the money, rolling out to his strong side, floats this one up in the corner. Right there, is he juggling the ball? Oh, the ball is being juggled is my ruling, but uh, that's a Cougar perspective. The <laughs> official's right there, right on top of it, and uh, they're 0 for 2 in my book. Well, you know, in that corner of the end zone, you've got the Huskies and all said good, and the Cougar band really didn't say anything, so I'm not <laughs> sure what's going on down there, but 
This time Anderson gets the extra point. Two controversial touchdowns and the Huskies have a 13 to nothing lead. Three minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the first quarter of Apple Cup 2000 on Fox Sports Net. Anderson to boot it away. Good kick into the corner. Nettles retreats. He'll pick it up at the three. Had some decent running room last time, but going too far sideways this time. And the dogs bring him down at the 17. We got a flag. A little hold. You saw some shoulder pads coming out. Greg Carruthers being held by a Cougar. So it's the Pac-10 rule this year. 50% of the kickoffs at least have to have a flag. So. <laughs> Well, that's trouble again moving the Cougars back into a situation where they got to dig themselves out of not only a 13 point deficit, but got to come off of uh, probably about the eight yard line is where I'm guessing this ball is going to be spotted. Makes it a long drive, a long way to go for that man, number four, Matt Kegel. Holding on a return. That's the return team. You have to get it to the goal. First down. I know the gym sounds cold down there and Mark and Osik was out. It is indeed the eight-yard line. Matt Kegel and company out for the third time. Didn't move it at all the first possession. Second possession, they were moving it fairly well, especially on the ground. And then Kegel overthrew. And an interception results in a Husky touchdown. Dave Minnick, again, good running room. The Marine puts the shoulder down and gets about seven, maybe eight on first down. Nick Lambert, Alan Cox trying to stay loose on the sidelines. Rex Clemens talking to the fellows on the sidelines, <laughs> talking to Rich Alexis there, letting them know about all the talking that's going on out in that football field. And we've seen a couple personal fouls already called, and the one that really hurt the Cougars after they'd stopped on third down. But here comes Minnick again. He's got the first down, gets out to the 20 yard line. Good to see that the Cougars are able to get some running room for Minnick. That's a, the best thing that can happen to Kegel after throwing that interception is establish something on the ground and then get back to that short possession type passing game that he's been pretty adept at. You know, Dave Minnick is listed at six feet, guys, and I'm not sure if that's true because he's hiding behind some of those big linemen for the WSU. Huskies could be smelling the roses. Oregon State has defeated Oregon. They're probably tearing down the goalposts in Corvallis. Play fake, Kegel guns it out. Meisen makes the dive and catch. He'll pick up about three yards on the play. Well, there's what I was talking about, the ability to take the running game, go play action off it, and even though it's only a, a four-yard catch by Meisen there, it's something that's positive and safe down here near your own end of the football field. Well, I'm surprised with the Cougars this season looking at the stats where you see Russell Meisen only had eight receptions coming into the ball game, and Mike Price usually throws to the tight end a little bit more. Minute, nowhere. Lost a yard on that carry. There's Muskies did a nice job. Hakeem Akbar coming up. Now, Ryan Julian has been solid at the end position for the Huskies, and that time he made a good play against his counterpart of WSU there. Cougars thought perhaps the Huskies would be vulnerable deep with the large receivers. Brian Foley Dixon victimized them a couple of weeks or a couple times last week against UCLA, but we haven't seen Matt throw it deep yet. Brian Foley Dixon is an outstanding athlete. Not that the Cougar receivers aren't with their numbers, they certainly are. Kegel steps up, gonna have to try to run it. Gets a block, gets outside. And didn't get there, did he with the stretch? We'll see. Rick Neuheisel down there to make sure that there's a good spot. We'll see if it's enough. It looks like it might be, to, well, <laughs> hard to tell. I, I don't think we can make the call yet. <laughs> well, the way Eagle. things have gone today, I'm not going to touch it. He's scrambling around for his life, trying to get something up to the top of the screen, not able to do it. Gets a great block here to spring him around the corner. 
and he stretches this football out at the last second and that's a good spot if they give it to him because it looked like his knees had gone down before he reached out had to get to the 30 yard line and got it so a big conversion that time by Matt Kegel just making something out of nothing for first down of the afternoon for the Cougars we saw the CW on the jersey for the Huskies for Curtis Williams and certainly our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to Curtis Williams there's no question uh, Akeem Akbar his close friend has stepped in in his position of strong safety and Greg Carruthers the freshman has moved to Akeem's spot at weak safety Carruthers by the way out of Helena Montana might have Locked horns with that young man, Matt Kegel, sometime during their high school careers. Minnick on first down. The Huskies bottling things up a little better that time, and it's a pickup of about three. And a little pushing and shoving going on. You saw Tyler Hunt for the Cougars uh, protecting his running back, not letting those Huskies jump on the pile. <laughs> That's what those linemen are supposed to do. See, I love my linemen when they took care of our running backs, especially me. There's a look at Matt Rogers. Transfer on the sidelines. Second and seven, shotgun for the first time. Kegel gonna run quarterback draw. Didn't fool big Larry Tripp, but Hakeem Akbar comes up, puts a big hit on Kegel as Ben Madavi had a hold of him as well. Well, trying to catch the Huskies coming up field. They've shown a lot of pressure coming from the outside in, and they were hoping that they might be able to kick out, but ran right into Akbar and company. That'll be the final play of the first quarter, and the Huskies have a 13-0 lead over the Washington State Cougars. A couple of controversial touchdowns, but the Dogs have two scores on the board in Pullman. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to further action. Walker in at fullback. Alexis hit, falls forward for a gain of a yard. This is the warm weather backfield. Walker from Honolulu and Alexis from Florida. <laughs> Kenny Walker's worked his tail off to get out there and get some playing time at fullback. He's been on both sides of the football this season and last season, but uh, really has settled in at a blocking fullback position. Not a bad start, and he didn't play that much. 21 rushes for 127 yards last week, and his shoulder doesn't look that hurt. Does it, Cleve? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> if that's a bad shoulder, I'd hate to see him healthy. Second and eight. Ben Cook show blitz. Here comes Randall Smith from the outside, but he's picked up. Two, he guns it out as the completion to Robbins, who's knocked out of bounds. It'll be third and short. Good little option throw there for Tui as he had Elstrom going down on the 45 degree angle and Justin Robbins breaking it off to the flat and picks him up. Justin Robbins, guys, as a freshman, has really come on this season and played real solidly. He's making fewer mistakes and running his routes correctly. Well, by this time of the year, there are no freshmen left. These guys have got 10 <laughs> games under their belt. Yep, they've got 10 games under their belt now. Third and almost three. Spin, Kangaika wraps him up though. Alexis will not get the first down. So the Huskies will have to punt it away. We're gonna see Ryan Fleming for the first time. Nice job by the Cougar defense coming up there. Mats and others not blown off the ball by that bigger Husky offensive line. Got enough penetration to allow the linebackers come up and make a good tackle on Alexis. So nice job there and forcing the punt. Hopefully the offense can get back with some field position here. Fleming, 38 yards a kick. See if the Cougars come after one. They got one last week against SC that turned up big. Fleming has not had a kick block this year. Snap kind of floats back. Cougars got close but didn't get it. Good kick. Henderson will make the catch. And gets a block and gets outside. 
There's that halo Sonny doesn't like. Forced the defenders to stop and allowed Henderson to get a couple of yards. Huskies lead it 13 to nothing. Cougar football when we return to Pullman. The Apple Cup 2000 on Fox Sports Net. Cougars come out in a double tight end alignment with Dave Minnick in the backfield. First down from their own 31, trailing 13-0. Kegel, the quick toss, guns it, caught Marcus Williams, and does a nice job to run through the Husky defender and get a first down. Derek Johnson on the corner, and he was no match for Marcus Williams. Well, there you go. I mean, the one thing that you'd love to be able to do here, you've got Massey in the game. He's 5'11 and a freshman at the other side, guard and win. Like to take advantage of those matchups with those big guys, and they're pretty high percentage throws. Get Kegel a little confidence going. And I think it dropped off a bit. Officials will have to measure, and they won't have to move the chains very far. Milton Wynn haven't heard from yet. He's been open on a couple plays, uh, but hasn't really come up with a big play, and that's what he's been so good at for most of this Cougar season. Maybe got a play calling chance here to go deep to Winter Williams because it's second and about an inch. Yeah, if I'm Mike, I'm thinking I'm gonna get something going here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the ball on the ground and pick up first down and try to march down the field, take some time. My defense has been out on the field quite a bit. Well, you look at those receivers, one thing I was looking at is the yards per game for Win, but the yards per catch for Williams. You know, and uh, it's nice to have one guy near 100 yards and another near 20 yards on reception. There you saw the graphic. Eight yards, a little over per pass play. Leads the pack 10. See if they go for something or just try to grind it out. They're going to grind it. And Minnick, with the second effort, gets the first down and not much more. If I'm Mike Price, I'm, I'm thinking, boy, I'd love nothing better than to take this football, take seven or six minutes off the clock. Give my uh, defense a little bit of break. Coach Newhouse would love to have the football back in, in Tuias Sopo's hands. But control passing game, some nice, clean, easy, high percentage throws. Maybe mix in a screen to slow down that uh, pass rush. Two wides down at the bottom, as you see some of the mixed Husky Cougar crowd. Got to be bundled up to enjoy today. Here's Minnick, same play, and about the same result. Maybe another two yards. Ball came loose, but after the whistle. Jeremiah Farms in there on the tackle, also uh, like Morona, inside backers. And also Daryl Daniels. And uh, I tell you, you talk about a solid guy that uh, doesn't say much. He's a quiet guy, but he is the leading tackler for the Huskies, and his nose is always around the football, number 24, right there, Daryl Daniels. One of the few seniors on this Husky defense. Well, up on top, if I'm Mike Price, I'm looking at Johnson. Matched up on win, man to man. I throw it up there. Oh, there's a the movement. Mizen, the tight end, jumping. Cougs hurting themselves. There's Jason Gesser on the sideline. Young man who was injured last year at Apple off, Cup man. time. Second down, five yard penalty. Came back though and played just a little bit in that Apple Cup game. Ran it, threw one pass. Another one that loves the cold. <laughs> yeah, another, another one of those kids from Hawaii <laughs> right about this time thinking about that Thanksgiving break. <laughs> Mike Price just really needing something out of his offense here. Kegel buying some time, trying to get with Milton Wynn. Now Kegel's going to run it back the other way. He's got an escort, got Locker. What's he going to do? Wants to gun it, and it's caught. McElrath. We got a late, late flag. Let's see what it is. Well, the call's from the linesman, and I'm guessing that he's looking at uh, offensive linemen going across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. Unfortunately, when when Matt's back there running around, the, the guys don't know him as well, maybe, as, as they will in the future, and they're, they're expecting him to pull this thing down and run. Comes over to the left, trying to find something with Milton Wynn. Not there. Everybody's locked up. 
Let's go back the other way, see what's going on. And, and the offensive linemen are looking back. You see him on the head on the swivel, and boy, put the ball right there for a great throw, but it's all going to come back. So penalties once again haunting. Cougars, the most penalized team in the Pac-10, and it's already a factor today. Well, it's one thing that play did is it took some time off the clock, but you know, he is uh, just a good looking athlete. Uh, Matt Kegel running around back there. The Huskies not bringing a lot of people, Cleet, and that way he buys him some time back there to look for an open man. Back to back penalties. That's why Mike Price has that perplexed look. His team yet to score. Out of the shotgun, Kegel on second and 18. Meisen makes the catch, but he's wrapped up almost immediately. Anthony Kelly, backup linebacker, who got the start today in place of Jafar Williams with the tackle. Yeah, Jafar Williams has been bothered with a bad ankle, but look at the job on Larry Triplett right here, the double team, and then single team, and Jersey. <laughs> they had it all, Cleet. Well, a pretty good job that time on the double team, though. You can expect that if Triplett's going to line up over the center, that that Hunt is going to get help from the from the guard and pass protection, but this guy is a force to deal with right in the middle of the football field. Cougs need about 13 to keep this drive alive. Dogs a little confusion personnel-wise out there. Kegel rolls to buy time, has time, guns it. It slipped out of his hands. It's caught, but I don't think he got a foot down. Looked like he was out of bounds. Maybe if he'd have been bobbling it, they would have given it to him. <laughs> well, Kegel was bobbling it. <laughs> That's too bad. Mike's got to make sure that he doesn't get too down. Just got to keep him calm and keep him up because he's the answer this afternoon for the Cougars to have some success. Cox to put it away. He's gotten off two good kicks so far. To Ray Butler, the deep man. Trying to stay as warm as he can under that helmet. Kind of the side of the foot. Butler, that ball's loose. Looks like the Huskies have it covered at the 10. Alexander helping out to cover it. That was a nightmare. Late flag. Did the Cougs not give enough room? Well, I think what they're going to, there was a push in the back that forced the blocker into the receiver. As you see it coming down, here's the push, and it looks like Massey gets thrown right into. Butler and and the, they're going to rule interference there as the official quick notes that it's the ball was touched but uh, it came quite late in the uh, conversation here and I think they're going to call that though as an interference against the Cougars and that's yeah. what it is Scott Lund came down and made a big push but you know these guys were cold too with those gloves and those things tucked in their pants it took them a while non-contact foul Violation of the two yard build against the kicking team. Five yards from the spot of foul. First down. That's an interesting interpretation because the Cougar is not, well, he might be ruled he's in the two yard range there. Uh, that's a tough one. But well, it was because the ball hit Massey in the back and he was close to Massey. Wasn't close to Butler, <laughs> but he was within two yards of Massey. We've seen a few interesting bounces here as that's a great recovery though that time by Alexander getting up there and scooping it up. Out comes Tui Asasopo and gang. Conniff the fullback. No, Tui Asasopo, the pitch. Alexis, out of bounds. Great play fit, fooled me. Had, had everybody fooled. That'll get you out of a hole in a hurry. I tell you what, as a quarterback running this option, everybody goes with Pat Conniff and great blocking by Stevens Cleet. But right there, your running back staying with you as you're going downfield allows you to pick up the extra yardage. Yeah, Tuya Sopa uh, does a nice job here with the fake, pulls it out of there, and then decides, hey, I'll give the give the yardage to Alexis, who's going to get credit for the full carry there, although Tuya Sopo took it half the way. First down at the Cougar 41 now. Dogs up by 13. Looking to go deep. Martin is there. Great catch. Is it a catch or out of bounds? It is a catch. Patrick Reddick. First and goal, Huskies. 
Now they're going to call it incomplete. You've seen uh, it reversed here, a recount. Martin right there, there's the catch, one foot's in, That's and a then he call. lands out. I think he's got this call. That is a bad there's call. There's the catch. How close is that? That the judgment call right there is you can argue that he hasn't he's caught the ball there goes the foot that's a that's a catch folks yep. yeah that's uh that was a heck of a grab good or bad i'm thinking it's this florida thing this just got everybody screwed up well you know they <laughs> unfortunately the officials get graded out as well after every game here's the very end of it and again you make the call you're the official there's the catch got control the foot hits and then he lands out of bounds Bottom line, it's second and 10 from the Cougar 41 for the Huskies. Cougs come up with the blitz. Pressure. Tuiasa Sopo eludes two. Gets rid of the football. Caught. Horrible tackle. Well, there's a, that's where you let Tui be Tui, guys. Yep. You got it. When you get your opportunity, you better wrap him up because this kid will not quit. Kept his eyes looking downfield and finding an open man. Well, that's a Heisman Trophy kind of play right there. This guy is, is wrapped up here. You got Isaac Brown miss him, Banks miss him. His own man missed him. You got two guys in front of him get laced out of bounds and put it right in the numbers for your back to pick up a first down. Great play. Ball down to the 22, game 19. First down, Huskies. A little movement on the right side of the dog line. Well, it's, you know it's bad when you had about three guys moving from the offensive line. Elliot Silvers, I think, started it. One thing about 300 pounds, once you get it rolling, <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> that last play by two of us, so pull was up. just another Houdini act where he's able to use his footwork, move around in the pocket, and make something happen good. And you got to give credit to Braxton Clemens, the, the running back out on the route, staying with him and coming across the middle. That's one thing about Braxton Clemens. He can catch the football. And you see one of the finalists for the Unitas Award, also a finalist for the Davy O'Brien Award as well. A couple of potential honors for Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Cougars with 10 in the box and come out of it. Tupo Tupo. Clement, a great catch, out of bounds. First and goal, Huskies. And again, you see Marcus' expression. He's real fired up. He's just saying, oh, another play by me. <laughs> As, uh, here comes Tupo off the, off the corner. He's beating Stevens, who's probably not your best pass protect guy. Steps up. Got a guy in his face. Going to play a little game with him. He said, oh, yeah, come and get me, Randall. I'll dump it over your head. And, and, he, and he did it, he just baited him. He said, come and get me, and then lobbed it out here to Braxton. Another nice grab, too, by the running back. First and goal from the six. Conniff up the middle. Touchdown, Washington! Pat Conniff with a little help from his friends gets into the end zone. Again, off that little toss fake, Cleet coming back with the fullback up the middle. Well, you're so conscious of Tui Asasopo and the threat of the option and, and looking outside that these guys pound it right up the middle of the football field and James Price just gets lost in traffic. And Ben and others uh, force him across. Anderson. Boots the extra point through, and the Huskies have a 20 to nothing lead with 6.35 left to play. In the first half of Pullman, it's all dogs so far. Huskies on top, 20 to nothing. Anderson ready to boot it away. Floater towards the sidelines again. This time it'll be Billy Newman from the nine-yard line. 
Trying to cut back against the block here and finds a little alley. Billy Newman gets hammered at the 30. Big old hit by Greg Carruthers, young man out of Montana who has a reputation of liking to lay the leather on people. You look at Pat Conniff with the blocking, Kyle Ben up front, he takes on Mano Omano, the linebacker for Washington State. That's just power right down and a little help from Kyle Ben as well to get in the end zone. Huskies with a quick scoring drive, 74 yards in just 46 seconds. That game, the Cougars 219 yards to just 61. Well, Cougars first throw coming out of the spread offense with no back. Kegel trying to dump it out to Milt Wynn. The coverage was good. Derek Johnson on the coverage. Huskies are mixing it up well with the defensive backs and linebackers that time. Farms coming in. Put a little love pad on Matt Kegel. See Rick Neuheisel pointing at something from the Cougar offense. It's an unfamiliar position for the Huskies being up, but we're not to the fourth quarter yet. So. <laughs> Minnick trying to bounce it outside. The Marine keeps going, gets out near the 37 yard line. Makes the third down play call a little easier. Running game's been effective. Uh, Mike just hasn't had the luxury of sticking with it. Now down by 20, he's gonna have to really rely on Kegel to get him back into this game. Although if you could get one score in here before the end of the half, that would certainly help with the momentum going into the halftime. Well, those penalties have just seriously killed the Cougars so far in the first half. Well, the Huskies have taken the crowd out of it as well. Here comes pressure, Kegel gets rid of it. Great catch by Milt Wynn. Had to reach behind him and made the catch and got out to midfield. Well, this time Kegel does a little uh, Tui Asasopo dance and buys himself some time. Throws one about 100 miles an hour there, and uh, on a cold day, Milton Wynn does a, just a great job of reaching back and catching a ball that didn't have anything that resembled touch on it. <laughs> no, it didn't. Here you see the non-conference record. Pac-10, best ratio this year. All the big 12s right there. First down, Cougs at midfield. Kegel has time, going deep, wants Milt win. Tried to adjust, couldn't quite make the catch. Amare Lowe stuck with Milt win. Well, that's the kind of play you'd like to be able to see, though, is go ahead and let your guy Milt Wynn, who's been doing it all year, play the percentages. He's got the advantage of being able to look back and time his leap. But Lowe does a fantastic job of just gaining position. You see that Milton had a shot at it. Both hands on it. Well, that was a well-thrown football. And uh, Milton Wynn, this guy's going to be playing somewhere down the road, I, I feel. Second down now from midfield for Washington State. Cougars desperately need to get some points on the board. They set up the screen and it's knocked down by Triplett. I couldn't tell if somebody had caught it or not. And then Triplett, frustrated, couldn't hang on. Well, Larry Triplett, I think, was looking towards the end zone, trying to score there, Cleet, but well, look at the pressure on this play. Up at the top, you'll see the corner come in on the blitz, and this has Matt Kegel thinking, I've got the perfect play called, but Triplett reads it pretty well and, and ties up the running back stays with him and almost makes a play. That is making a play for your defensive line. And that is. Knocking it down because they had the right right play. If they completed that, they'd have been scooting on down the field. Third down, down 10. Out of the shotgun goes Kegel. Steps up, guns it. Another drop by a Cougar receiver. That's the difference. Huskies are making some big catches. Washington State isn't. Well, you got to have help from your teammates, Kegel's, you know, getting it done from his standpoint here. And Marcus, who made the big plays last week in the nice warm confines of the Coliseum, isn't able to come up. Looked like he stumbled right before he went to dig this ball out, but that's a good throw by Kegel. Well, it's because he's not cradling that ball in with his hands first and bringing it to his body. You can't let the, that bullet hit you in the body. It's just not gonna work. Cox to punt it away from midfield. Butler back for the dogs to hang this one. Butler will come up and field it at the 16 and get hammered immediately. 
and they gave him enough room to catch it this time. <laughs> but <laughs> they give up the football again. Yeah, that Teray Butler is standing tall back there. You see Bill Doba. Bill has done a great job over here for over the years, Cleet, the defensive coordinator. Nice guy, good coach. Husky ball on their own 17, 4.50 to go, first half. Huskies trying to grind things out for a while, you'd imagine. Caught up with fullback, Cougars smell it out, dropped it for a yard loss. Cougar offensive line huddled up against the heater. Huskies brought over the heated benches. The band wouldn't get off them before the game started. <laughs> Can't say you blame them, though. Well, it's a luxury of having the Seahawks play in your house. You get to use some of their toys. And with the Seahawks off this weekend, didn't mind the Huskies taking those for a ride. Second and 11, Cougars showing blitz. Maury Banks looking like he might come from the safety spot. Cougs are going to be offside. Just a free play that isn't going to go much of anywhere. So the penalties continue to mount for Washington State. See Curtis Williams' number on his wristband. You know, Pat Conniff, guys, is playing with a bad leg. He missed a couple games due to that injury. And his shoulder wearing a brace on that. There's a great stat. Uh, you talk about parity throughout college football that uh, there's been a different entrant into that Rose Bowl race over the last six years now, and uh, I think we'll have a new one. Looking that way right now. Well, I talked to the commissioner last week, Tom Hansen, and I, I, Tom, tell me, is there a better conference throughout America from top to bottom as far as being competitive? I can't think of one. No, I think you can argue some people in the SEC might disagree with you, but it is yeah, tough top to bottom in the back go. 10. I think the overtime games that we've seen <laughs> this year. <laughs> you guys seen, boy. Yeah. Well, someone uh, was, was trying to have a debate with me of who would have been the uh, the potential Pac-10 champion with all those ties that we didn't have the overtime. And Coach Neuheisel is going to say, let's uh, take a timeout here and not get out of control as he's halfway out on the field. He's not happy about that timeout either. Not happy with the officials. Second and six on the 21 for the dogs when we resume play. Mike Price and his Cougars still on defense. We'll be back to Pullman in a moment. Dogs lead the Cougs 20 to nothing on Fox Sports Net. Second down and six for the Huskies. You see the Cougar fans a little quiet right now as the Huskies have a 20 to nothing lead and the football. As we near the end of the first half, Tui on the pitch. This is Alexis, has running room. Rich Alexis cuts it back and look out. Trufant on the chase. The Cougars finally bring him down inside their own 30 yard line. Shades of Paul Arnold a year ago. Well, brilliant job of Running the option by Marcus Tuiasopo, the Cougars are in a defense that should prevent anything from being created as they bring the crash from Randall Smith. He forces the pitch early, takes Conniff out of the blocking, but brilliant cutback right there. And then here's another nice little cutback move. Good hustle coming from the backside by Trufant. It's a defensive lineman, Didi Achalano running him down from behind. Yeah, as I was well. going to say, he can motor. <laughs> Young man who scored a touchdown last week. Just broke uh, Willie Hurst's freshman record. First down, Dogs at the Cougar 29. Here's Clement, bounces it outside. Does a great job to get outside. Well, I tell you, it looked like Chris Martin had him dead to rights in the backfield. He just bounced outside of him. Good recognition by Braxton Clement that there weren't a lot of red jerseys on the outside there, Cleet, and he just bounced it out and picked up some great yardage. Aren't a lot of uh, Pac-10 running backs out of Oroville, Washington, either. <laughs> no. Well, you see the 
the statistics right there, 26 first down, rushing the football. They did it all last week against UCLA, even though they're in a tight ball game, but that 38-39 was the big reason they won that one. Now two tight ends just blasting away. Huskies with 177 rushing yards in the first half, and they add to it here. Alexis will get a couple. You know, Rich Alexis is a is a big guy. You kind of I saw him during the fall camp when he first got here, and you know he's a solid 220. There you see the yardage on the rushing game, and uh, like the scoreboard, very lopsided. Alexis will come off and rest that shoulder a little bit, maybe uh, get an ice cold drink. Conniff and Clement in the backfield. Play fake. Intercepted. No, he dropped it. Looked like Marcus Trufant had another pick against the dogs. No, he's not arguing. No, Tuyasa Sopo waited too long, and you see right there, you got to put a little air time under that throw. Well, it looked like Marcus just baited that thing perfectly. He's trying to get the ball in the corner on the flood route over to, uh, I believe it's Elstrom, and does a nice job of closing the gap, and, and yep. you can see the ball on the ground there. Here, just a, a nice break on the football. Tried to get it into the, into the stomach, but it did roll around on the turf. Three wide receivers in the game for the Huskies, and they got Big Stevens matched up against Banks, the three safety who's coming now. To a deep, incomplete. Martin, the coverage on Elstrom, and then Banks coming over to help out as well. Looks like Todd Elstrom got his feet tangled up a little with the defensive back. Now a late flag thrown. Interesting going on here. This is a call on the on the coaches on the sideline, and Rick Ho Rick Neuheisel is just absolutely uh, really upset at his offensive coordinator. I think, and he's upset because it's going to move him back. He can't believe he's getting these calls over here. But unsportsmanlike conduct on the offensive bench. 15 yards, previous block, it's a 15-yard penalty and obviously affects the uh, the field goal attempt. Well, I tell you, these uh, the crew is having a tough day. Yeah, I, I to, to make that call uh, on that particular play, uh, you know, there was obviously nothing that was affecting what was going on on the field there and. Uh, Rick's going over there trying to make amends with the linesman. Fleming to punt. Cougs in their prevent umbrella type defense. Expecting just about anything. Low snap. And he just tries to goose it towards the sidelines. And he'll do a nice job of getting it out inside the 10 yard line at that's, the seven. That's a nice goose right there. See so many kickers that just try to kick it so high instead of trying to do what Ryan Fleming just did there. Well, the Huskies shot themselves in a the foot after the nice run by Rich Alexis and another nice run by Braxton and Clemen, but the Cougars now have another opportunity, Cleet, with a couple minutes to go. Long opportunity it is. is so they'll start on the 12-yard line, and the Husky defense has been pretty good at uh, bending a little here and there and not breaking. I mean, Matt Kegel throw it deep early on, try to break his record of 88 yards last week to Marcus Williams. Matt Williams, one-on-one, -on -one, bottom of the screen. He's going to hand it off, though, to Dave Minnick. And the Huskies do a nice job of standing Minnick up at about the nine-yard line. Akeem Akbar in there again with the tackle. Here you see the timeouts, and I was thinking that Washington might start to use their timeouts maybe to stop the clock if they uh, were able to stop the Cougars here on this next play, but without a number of timeouts, they really don't have that option. I would guess that they'll let this thing roll out unless the Cougars are, are throwing something and throw an incomplete pass. I would guess Mike Price might just try to run this out and not make any mistakes down here near his own end zone. Let's see what he does. He's crossed me up a number of times. <laughs> I bet he has. Pressure as Kegel trying to throw deep, and Williams is there, and Adjessa makes the catch. 
and goes out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. They would stop it for a minute while they move the chains, but it'll stay stopped until they snap it. Well, Kegel showing me something there, having the, the cool presence after he's got big triplet coming right down on top of him, throwing that ball where only his guy can get it. Big pop, the ball comes out after he is down, and the officials rule that made the catch, then it popped loose out of his control when he was out of bounds there. So the Cougars with a little life here. Minute 21, they've got to operate efficiently. It's hard for me to believe that uh, Larry Triplett that time, his jersey is pulled out of his uniform. Not too many holding calls called today. Eagle guns it, Williams pulled it off his leg, and boy, he had room to run. Well, he's got to hustle back to, the, he's over there kicking the bench and such because he knows that he's looking upfield and not catching that football. I just can't believe it. Boy, he had a lot of room. Well, Kegel has all sorts of time here. Here he's going to run this little seam route down the middle, and outside you're going to get the Marcus Williams coming across as it's cleared out underneath. Matt's got a lot of time to let this thing develop and throws this ball absolutely perfectly, and he's going to turn this corner and run a long way. I don't know if he gets in, but he's got a shot at making it happen. Third pass. Cougar receivers have dropped that might have resulted in big plays. Eagle last time here comes the pressure throws back he gets absolutely sandwiched and it's it gonna be incomplete and Kegel might not be getting up real quickly he was flat out sandwiched yeah AK Anthony Kelly Jeremiah Farms that was a huge sandwich we might see Paul Minky at quarterback now Matt gets up slowly watch this though rolling left trying to Get the defense to come with him and just get popped big time by Farms. On a cold night, that hurts even a little bit more. Big tough kid, though, from Montana. That's just a love tap. He'll get back on his horse. Probably the days of Jack Thompson. <laughs> Third down and 10, Washington State from their own 34. Win is the motion man. Mize in the catch. Gonna be a little short of the first down. This stage, what the heck? Go for it. Clock's running. Tick down to about 40 seconds before they'd be able to get this playoff. And uh, I believe Mike's going to go ahead and take a shot at it. They've been awful good this year on fourth down. 12 of 15 on fourth down. But if you're going to go for it, I'm a little curious as to why they allow as much time to run off as they do. Well, maybe they'll cross them up and go deep with it. <laughs> fourth and one. See what Matt <laughs> decides to come up with here. Minnick. Didn't get it. Huskies are going to have the football with 20 seconds left in a timeout. Well, I don't know. Clay, I, when yeah. short yardage, you go straight ahead, don't you? Well, uh, you'd like to at least think that you can get one yard by pounding behind your offensive line, but uh, that time Minnick got turned sideways and he's trying to pick it up on his own like he's had to do a lot this year. I'm surprised Kegel just didn't take the snap and step forward. The center was uncovered. Well, that's a good point, especially a big, strong quarterback like that. But you got to hand off to the guys that really it's in your rushing attack. And Minnick has done that all year. 20 seconds left. Huskies do have a timeout. See if they try to tack something on here, leading 20 to nothing. Here come the Cougs on a blitz. Tuiasa Sopo gets it away. And did Elstrom make the catch? Huskies would probably prefer that he didn't because it's going to cost him time. The clock stop. I think the Huskies called timeout real quick. Got enough for two plays. Can, uh, get a first down and, and perhaps try a field goal. Well, John Anderson does have a pretty good leg. Long of 56 in his career. No wind to help him here today. Options, one play to get into field goal range or throw it into the end zone perhaps twice. Or an out route to Todd Elstrom. Tui, the pump fake, going for it all. Robin, separation, catch, touchdown, Huskies. No 
No doubt about this one. No controversy at all here as he just gets behind the pump fake. Doesn't really do that much to spring him, but he just absolutely outruns Chris Martin as you see him go down there at the last instance and into the end zone. And Takes a, great, a little bit of shot, but Mike Price's gamble on fourth and one comes back to bite him. Yes. And that's a big six now, uh, <laughs> seven points. But the block, Braxton Clemen, allowing him time to get rid of the football. 27 nothing Huskies now. We'll be back with that kickoff in a moment. All Huskies in Pullman on Fox Sports Net. Anderson kicks it off. They'll squib it. Picked up in front by Scott Lundy for Washington State. That's the end of the half. All Huskies in the first half. Apple Cup 2000. 27 0 Washington at the half on Fox Sports Net. Well, the Cougars just kicked for the first time today. Alan Cox booted it away. Sean Sweat returned it to the 32 for the Huskies, and that's where we'll start. Quarter number three here in Pullman. Bud Namick along with Cleek Casper, Sonny Six Killer. Todd Pickett is on the sidelines. The Huskies dominating the first half. 27 to nothing lead for Rick Neuheisel's team. They outgained Washington State 326 yards to 114. And you can bet the Dogs, the number one running team in the Pac-10, Build up some more yards on the ground in this half. And this time, Billy Newman and the Cougars are able to stop Braxton Clemen. Clemen, seven carries for 40 yards in the first half. Take a look at what the Dogs did in the first half. Starting it off with those controversial, as we've called them, the touchdown and the touchdown. 80 play drive with 12 plays. But I think that one uh, score when they got down there, guys, when Tui Asisopo did his thing on that 74-yard drive was uh, pretty amazing. Here you see the numbers on Marcus in the first half, a great throwing half. Only carried it twice. Clement will get to the 36-yard line. It's going to be third and about six for the Huskies. Pretty good job by Tomasi Kengaika coming off the block and strapping up and hauling down big Alexis, the freshman who's Doing pretty darn good in these conditions. Oh, he loves it. Doing the mind over matter with no shirt on, no long sleeve <laughs> shirt. <laughs> Don't see any seniors doing that. <laughs> Huskies on third down. They've done pretty well today. Coog showing blitz. Two is going to change the play. Huskies do a great job of picking up the blitz. Tui Asasopo to Elstrom. Finally brought down at the 22. Great job by the Husky offensive line. Well, they come right out of halftime. Nice warm locker room and light it up. Nice job. Great protection and allows Elstrom to come all the way across the field. He was split up wide up the top of the screen and ends up down at the 21-yard line. But look at the protection inside. Braxton Clemens doing a good job picking up the linebacker coming. Nice job just stepping up, throwing it there, and he knew he had him. Tui tripped up. Austin Matson was able to fight off Pat Connor. Tui not happy about the execution on that play. Well, he yells at his ex-teammate from high school, Pat Conniff. He had a lot of room to roam on that play. I don't had think Matson not done a great job of tripping him up. There's a look at Ott's Matson's career, and that was another one for loss there. You can tack on. Uh, nice job there. I think uh, I don't think Tui was yelling so much. I think he was just upset about it because he, all that room he had. Yeah, he was uh, he was gone, but tripped up from behind. 
Second down, call it 13 for the dogs. Quick toss to him. Elstrom caught it, but he was out of bounds. Elstrom looking for a, a reprieve, trying to get a recount, do something. <laughs> he, uh, Look at this smile. He was arguing. He was working it, Cleet. He was exactly. working it. <laughs> this ball is thrown right where his guy can make the play. A big, tall, wide receiver. You can see the foot, though, definitely on the white, out of bounds side of things. So, bring up third down and 13. Let's see what Marcus Tuias Sopo can pull out of the hat this time. He's been doing it all evening. Surprisingly, we talked about his ability to rush the ball, but he's been doing it with the arm in less than favorable conditions. Cougars, everybody on the line of scrimmage. He's going to check out of it and look for the lob. It was tipped. Randall Smith got a finger on it, just enough to bother Justin Robbins. Yeah, it would have helped for the field goal position, but not nearly enough for the first down. So the Cougar defense, after taking a couple shots, uh, especially from Elstrom, is able to at least hold the Huskies out of the end zone and will force an attempt here. It's be a 41-yard attempt for John Anderson, as long as Sonny mentioned earlier, 42 so far this year, but he's been kicking well of late. Plenty of distance. And he got it. So the Husky lead is now 30 to nothing. And the Dogs keep their streak alive. They have been putting up at least 30 on the board. And they do it again today. Washington State has scored in 196 consecutive Pac-10 games. Last time they were shut out in Pac-10 play was by Oregon State back in 1975. That streak in jeopardy, the way things have gone so far today. Good high kick. Ball will be brought out from the two-yard line by Curtis Nettles. He trips over, looks like a teammate's feet. And the Cougars will have it for the first time to start the second half. Look at Rick down here. He likes to get into it. All facets of the game. He doesn't just talk to the quarterbacks. He likes to make sure his kicker's got a lot of confidence. And uh, the way he started the game out probably was waned a little bit there, Cleet, but he came back and kicked a nice field goal in that last possession. Cougs will start at their own 24-yard line. Down 30 to nothing. Just hoping to get something going at this point. <laughs> Matt Kegel at quarterback. Two tight ends for Washington State. Play fake. Kegel has it batted down. Jeremiah Farms from the outside linebacker position. Well, the Cougar first half possessions, nothing to write home about. They've uh, really struggled on offense. They had one shot when they picked up the ball on the Husky 11-yard line and were unable to punch it in. That's been their only real threat the entire evening. Kegel, 8-19 for only 78 yards. Needs some help from his wide receivers. Dave Minnick, close to a first down carry. Minnick has been able to run it pretty well in this one. Have not seen Dion Burnett yet at all. Yeah, I was going to ask you where Dion is on the field. He, Dave Minnick has uh, really outshined him, I guess, pretty much for the last half of the season, Cleet. Well, so far, no reason to pull Minnick out of the football game, quite frankly. It would be nice to maybe uh, throw to the back where Dion Burnett is someone that's a little more adept, but. First and ten, Cougars come out, two tights. Minnick tries to bounce it back. Not able to get very far. Looked like Jerome Stevens making the stop. Yeah, Larry Triplett, though, caused that action. He turned that play back to the inside. Watch pick number 70. 
going against Roche. Pushing him back, and when you push him back and get that penetration, that's really tough for your back. He has to do something, and that time he elected to cut back where all the pursuit from the Huskies was coming. That there is big look at, nice look at Larry. He'll be deserving of all Pac-10 mention this year. Kegel under pressure, he'll go down. Hit hard. Huskies brought the house and nailed Kegel, and Matt looking a little slow to get up again. Now unfolds himself from the turf. Well, Triplet again is able to go man on man with Hunt, the center. You'll see him right in the middle of the screen. He doesn't get any help and is able to swim him, come over the top, force Matt to come down with the eyes, and then Stevens blasts him from the side. Cold night, that hurts. Hurts on a warm night. Yeah. Jerome Stevens is certainly going to go up to Larry Triplet two plays in a row, making him look good. Third and 16 for the Cougars now. Trips to the left for Washington State. Kegel rolls to buy a little time. Pump fake, now throwing it deep. Up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Excellent coverage downfield that time. Cleet really nowhere to throw the ball, and somewhere near the sideline, letting his big receiver try to go up for it, but no, nobody was open. Now they brought Alexander in, and also Johnson with the nickel package, and sat back nice and comfortable, and waited for uh, something to happen that didn't. Good defense, good general strategy against the Cougar offense has been struggling this afternoon. Alan Cox to punt it away again. Kind of a sidewinder. So Ray Butler will be dropped in his tracks. 30 to nothing Huskies. It is all purple and gold in Apple Cup 2000. We'll take a break from Pullman on Fox Sports Net. First down Huskies from their own 40. Braxton Clement will cut it back and do a great job of cutting it back and end up getting nine yards on a play that was stuffed at the line of scrimmage. See the way Braxton Clement kind of weaves his way around back there. That time thought he was going to break it outside as he got done in the first half, but just kind of weaves his way down there for about a nine and a half yard gain. Oregon State over Oregon earlier, so a Husky win propels Washington to the Rose Bowl, at least for the time being. Because you never Who know knows? with the rest of the BCS action, enough chips could fall ahead of the Huskies that they could end up in the national championship game. Clement finds a hole and first down into Cougar territory, and that's exactly what the Huskies want to do, just grind it out on the ground and continue to eat up the clock. Well, one of the things that influences the BCS is the uh, the point differential margin of victory. And right now with 30 points, that's probably going to be uh, something that could come into a factor if things continue to play out. That's one of the bad things about the way that BCS is set up. Well, it's hurt the Pac-10 because the Pac-10 has been so competitive. Yep. Uh, every weekend, you've got a game on your hand. As Conniff going to take a couple up the middle, gets brought down. Close to the Cougar. Important that Mike Price's group doesn't quit and continues to finish out this football game. Uh, he would be very disappointed. These guys have fought back from adversity uh, with a couple of overtime losses this year and, and continue to play hard, clean football. As you look now at the BCS top 10 so far in Oklahoma, Miami, Florida State, Florida, then the Huskies. Second down and six for the dogs who are nearing 400 yards of total offense on this day. Option, Tui, pitch, Braxton Clement. Breaking tackles. 
Lee, you talked about this a moment ago. The Cougars appear to be the team affected more by the weather than the Huskies. Well, this is uh, being affected by a good play call. The Cougars come with the blitz on the back side, and so up on top, they're outmanned. And look, you've got a number of Huskies, two guys going on to pick off the linebacker. As there's no safety help, he's blitzed from the other side. And Braxton Clemens has done a great job filling in where there was some concern about the running game, and he has come in and just performed, outperformed uh, all of the Cougars' expectations. Well, you know, when you have that blitzing attack type defense, and you guess wrong, you, get, you, get, you pay for it. Well, I'm weaving, finding a little room where there is none. You just see the surge of that big offensive line for the Huskies. That's usually where it starts to tail in when you're behind, and also it's the second half. Right now, you've got that offensive line working. Taking another option pitch from Tuiasa Sopo, Braxton Clement early in the ball game, and also receiving the, the passes from Tuiasa Sopo. He's doing it all, Cleet. Nope. Being able to run and receive. Coach Neuheisel at the beginning of the year was uh, being criticized a little bit by his tailback by committee, but it's uh, showing up here now at the end of the season, having guys with a little bit of experience under their belt. On second and six, Clement hit, falls forward. It's going to be third and about a yard. Huskies have run at seven consecutive plays now on this drive. They face a third one. Well, got to believe they're just going to continue to pound away here, although Neisel may elect to put the ball in Tuiasa Sopo's hand for a little lob pass. It's been very successful. There you see the key of the running game, and boy, they're going to get past that uh, record here. 231 already. Well, we knew coming in that that was going to be a real key to the ball game. You know, what's interesting is, as this thing in role reversal, if the Huskies end up in the Rose Bowl and not in a different bowl game, they'd be going up against a Purdue team that is here. The Pac 10 is known for the throwing, and the Huskies are such a good running team, and Purdue's a throwing team. <laughs> role reversal in the Rose Bowl, perhaps. And a very good thrower back there in Drew Brees. Joe Tiller, former Cougar offensive coordinator, head coach at Purdue. Conniff. Don't think he got it. Uh, it look, looks to be a little short, bud. Cougars finally stuffed that fullback. Got the uh, eye black all smeared all over the place. I tell you, he's a true fullback, too. You need, you know, the shoulder brace, the knee brace, the eye black. <laughs> throwback. He is a throwback. Nice guy, good kid. Well, the. CW there on the helmet. Uh, hopefully Curtis is, is able to watch this game and enjoy things as his Huskies are pounding away here. Fourth down and one. Clement has the first down of the five. Clement did a nice job of waiting that time for that hole to open. Yeah, Braxton Clement is getting close to a 100-yard mark. They put him over 90 yards for the game. Six carries for 52 yards on this drive, bud. Krieger down, slow, trying to make his way off the sidelines. I believe it's the run from Morong. Couldn't really get the number from here. It is Morong. Okay. Young man out of Pullman, junior. Huskies now 425 yards of offense. You see that we've seen the patches on the uniform and the decals. All types of uh, all types of money sponsorships going on over in the Seattle area. Different groups trying to put some money together for everything over and above what the insurance doesn't cover. Looks like Saran is going to be able to walk off on semi his own power. Left leg looks to be bothering him a bit. It's a beaver believer. <laughs> <laughs> Won't see that too often. But no. Whatever it takes. New Heisel, Marshall and his troops down the field. First and goal from the five for the dogs. Two tight ends. Conniff and Alexis. Conniff. Just keeps on going. Cougars.
took the football away, but Conniff whistled down at the one. Yeah, he was trying to stretch out to the one yard line to the goal line from the one. Surprised he made that much yardage clean. It didn't look like he was going to get anywhere on that play. These goal line situations are 50% physical, 50% heart. I think the Huskies have the heart end of things right now simply because of the look on the scoreboard. Diving in for the touchdown. Rich Alexis. Bunch of oranges being thrown off the field <laughs> by the Husky group, uh, signifying uh, the prophecy of going to the Orange Bowl. But here, Alexis really doesn't even get met until he's on the ground and in the end zone. And that was just a power pack drive all the way. Just bang, 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 stop us if you can. But we're going to run this between the tackles. Had a couple options that were uh, additive to the mix. Anderson perfect on the extra point. It is 37 nothing Huskies with 416 left to play in the third quarter in Pullman. You're watching Apple Cup 2000 on Fox Sports Net. Young Huskies, Huskies of all ages enjoying this one. 37 nothing Huskies. Rick Neuheisel on his way to a second consecutive win of the Apple Cup. <laughs> Those guys are mad. I don't know, Cleve. <laughs> Beyond mad. With some of those bodies, they shouldn't do it when the sun's out. Anderson to the goal line. Curtis Nettles trying to find some room. Cuts it back and gets drilled at the 12. Sean Sweat down there and another freshman scaring the daylight out of the return man, Nettles. Talking about a heck of a drive. The Huskies just put on 10 plays, every one of them on the ground. 60 yards. And they used up over five and a half minutes. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Well, you credit the running backs, but that offensive line doing what they're supposed to do. Power football. Eat some clock at the same time, Cleet, and be able to get some some score out of it. Mike Price looking to the playbook, and uh, it's getting thin right about now. Is uh, the, the the number of calls? You've got to throw the ball and try to make something happen in a hurry. And yeah, they'll run it. Minnick finds a little room, breaks a tackle, gets outside. Dave Minnick still on his feet, gets a block outside, and gets across the 40-yard line. Minnick battling. Well, he hasn't given up, and the offensive line doing a great job. Nice job by Hollenbeck. I'm not sure what Ben Madabi was waiting for, perhaps a cutback there, Cleet, but you can't stand still. The running backs will go right by you. Minnick, 90 yards on the day now. Again, he's not going to blind you with the speed, but he'll power it up there. He's done a nice job tonight. If anybody has done a, a good job, it's been him. First down from their own 42. Kegel changing the play call. Wants to go deep. Coming back as McElrath makes the catch. And he gets hammered, but hangs on to the football. So finally, the, uh, the ball is put in a position where the receiver can make a play on it, and they do. Yeah, slightly underthrown that time, and Derek Johnson not able to come recover from where his position was on this play, Cleet. This one is uh, obviously that's not the prototype throw, and it's severely underthrown, but McElrath makes a nice play on the ball, and the Cougars have some life. Coe caught three touchdown passes against Arizona. Tied a Cougar record. Minnick back in the backfield. Cougs were in scoring position once after a Husky turnover and failed to score, and they false started there. Awful long time to sit in there and wait for the call to be made. Husky shift late. Kegel makes the call late, and uh, somebody rocks out. 
The Huskies called timeout before okay. the play could fire. Well, the reason they had to, Derek Johnson hurt his leg when he was coming back under the underthrown pass and fell down, and the Huskies smartly called timeout instead of him out there with an injured leg. So the Huskies have to use up a timeout. Sonny better salt that one away. Could be a factor later. <laughs> Good. 37 at the dogs. We take time out on Fox Sports Net. <laughs>
here it is, the fight for the football. He, he, what he was trying to argue is that he caught it and come down with it, but clearly, I don't think so. Unable to even justify that argument. Good job by the freshman defensive back, Chris Massey. Drew Dunning out of Issaquah is going to try a 33 yard field goal. Out of the hole to Paul Menke. Snaps high, Menke gets the hole down. And he got it. So the Cougars are on the scoreboard. They're going to cheer from the crowd. They won't be shut out on this day. 37 to 3 Huskies. You're watching Apple Cup 2000 on Fox Sports Net. Dunning to kick it off. It is a shorter kick. Fielded by Alexander, and he's got a hole. Out to about the 43, and late flag comes in. It's that Pac-10 rule coming into play again. Well, let's see if he grabbed a little of the helmet on this play. I think that official's going to call the, the face mask. He called it from behind. I'm not sure if it was face mask or jersey. That way. I tell you, Rock Alexander is an exciting ball player, freshman, state sprint champion in Colorado. Bringing him along slowly, but you could just see a little glimpse right there of the ability that young man has. That Pressure man, I know, has ability. 15 yard face mask coming against the. Coach Randy Hart coming over and getting a little high five. <laughs> I don't blame him on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Stay loose. <laughs> Stay with me. <laughs> Huge penalty because it's the personal foul variety moves the ball to the Cougar 39. Great field position to start on the drive for the Huskies. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo staying at quarterback as you see Dave Minnick on the Cougar sideline. Tyler Hunt next to him. <laughs> 41 seconds left in the quarter. Alexis bounces it outside, cuts it back, and has a first down at the 16-yard line. Well, that uh, is not usually a move you see by a guy that's a wounded warrior back there. Most backs probably would have taken that out of bounds and, you know, been completely happy with the lead you've got. But Alexis says, heck with it, I'm going to keep it in bounds and turn it upfield and try to cause some more damage. Cleet, that's the reason he really started playing earlier uh, in the season. He came on against Miami the first game. The Husky coaches weren't really happy with the way the backs were getting tough, going for yardage, going and between the tackles normally. But this young man will do that. First down at the 15 officially. Caught up the fullback, a big hole. And he just carries people inside the five. How's that for a celebration after a run? Get, <laughs> get up and adjust your thigh pads. <laughs> Not a lot of uh, flash with Conniff, but he's been extremely effective, the, especially these last two football games coming off the injury. Huskies have already rushed for 276 yards through three quarters in Pullman. Huskies on their way to the Pac-10 title. Fourth quarter, set to get underway with the Huskies with a first and goal with a three, and Tui throws it, and Joe Collier from Spokane can't hang on. 
Well, if he would have hung on, that would have been the first time too he'd had four touchdown passes in a football game. Big Joe playing because Andre Ware the went out earlier in the season, and Joe Collier's gotten a lot of reps, and he's going to kick himself for that one. He's got a lot of family down here from yes, Spokane. He well, he's a little taped up on that right hand, and that's the one he goes up to catch it with, and just <laughs> that's good defensive play right there, Joe. <laughs> Way to bat it down. <laughs> Second and goal. Too easy for Braxton Clevin. He's over 100 yards. His first touchdown of the day. Well, the running back triumvirate of Conniff, Alexis, and that man all have a touchdown now. Braxton Clemens gets over. Really no real surprise there as the offensive line for the Huskies we talked about it at the beginning of the show uh, have just come on to really dominate this entire football game. Second touchdown of the year for the young man from Oroville. Anderson to kick the extra point. Got it. 44 to 3 Huskies. One of the more anticlimactic Apple Cups we've seen in a while. All dogs in Apple Cup 2000. Watching college football on Fox Sports Net. Sixth ranked Huskies 44, Washington State 3. Most of the fourth quarter yet to play. Husky fans hanging around. A lot of Cougar fans have made their way to the exits. Can't bear to watch the dogs celebrate on the home field of the Cougars. Well, a lot of Huskies remember the day that the Cougars came into Husky Stadium and made it to the Rose Bowl. Looks like Billy Newman this time on the short kick at the 13. Trying to find a little hole. Coming back, there's a flag. Pretty much take that for granted now. Yeah, there's always going to be a push somewhere just because of the angles and the speed these guys generate going downfield. Mike Price not happy, still battling. Interesting to see if uh, Mike starts Holy to put some of his. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Some of his. Uh, what I will call walk on type players who have been with the program for a lot of years. And uh, at this point, as you look at the game summary here, that's pretty much over. The Huskies with just absolute domination. Pretty balanced, actually, with 190 yards passing. Washington State, nothing really going. And uh, that last, last one, <laughs> eight wins by an average of 5.8, Cleet. It's yeah, uh, been a long time. Saved it all up for this one. Didn't have to come from behind in this one. At any point, Kegel hands it off to Dave Minnick. They get about two yards. Akbar Carruthers in on the stop as they have been many times today. Daryl Daniels trying to tell the official he's being held as well. Well, you're right, Cleet. You got some new faces out there. You got Josh Shavies in at tight end, 44 for the Cougs. But they're a young team, that offensive line. There aren't a lot of upperclassmen on there. No, these are guys that have uh, played a little earlier than you would have expected. Uh, Parrish, the big left tackle, he's a guy that's got a tremendous future. And pick up the pieces and work through it. Pressure, Kegel steps away from it, almost runs into his own man. and Should be a pass interference. Boy, Josh, or Shea, there's the flag finally. Shavies was being held. Finally, uh, the ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. <laughs> had enough of this evening. He's wow, I guess. Had a tough night. Well, it's tough when the call, the flag comes in so late from the far side of the field where the three officials on the current, on this side of the field don't make a call. That drive me nuts as a coach as well. Minnick trying to bounce it outside, met by a couple of Huskies, gets out to the 32-yard line. A couple of new Huskies now on the defensive side of things as they're bringing in some new faces. 
George Don Willis going to see some action at middle linebacker. Huskies can make some tentative plans to go to the Rose Bowl. Still have to wait and see what else happens in the BCS. Next year, of course, the Rose Bowl will host the national championship. Kegel, toss, tough catch by Milt Witt, can't make it. All right, now I think Todd Pickett's ready down on the sidelines with a special guest. Todd? Thanks very much, Bud. The uh, Huskies looking for their first 10 win season since 1991. Pete Caligas was a part of that. We talked to Rick at halftime, and he talked about maintaining focus in the second half. This team has done that this afternoon. Yes, they have. And, I mean, you look at the games that we played, we got a real special team here. They're a tight-knit family. They go out, they get it done. And, that, I mean, that's most important when it comes down to it, being a family. And this family has gone through a lot of adversity and a lot of tests with the, all the come-from-behind wins this year. Uh, what does it mean to finish off the season this strong with a performance like this today? I think more importantly, when you look at the performance today and what you dedicate the season to, is you dedicate to Curtis Williams more than anything else. And that, that's what it counts is Curtis. And this win today is for him. And uh, let's put that ring on his finger, and that's the main thing about it right there. Pete, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for spending a few moments with us. Thank you very much. Back upstairs to you guys. All righty, Todd, thank you much. We're going to be hearing plenty more from Todd during the post game. An opportunity to celebrate with the Huskies. Cougars with another false start. Sets up a third and 11 from the 28. Boy, it's nice to hear from Pete Callaghan, though. He's uh, just a heck of a guy. See, Marcus, he looks pretty happy on the sideline. He always looks like that, though, even if they're down. Kegel gets it away to Meisen, but a nice play by the new linebacker, Javon Willis. And the Cougars left to punt it away. Yeah, you, that time you saw Matt Kegel kind of throw that and, and re retreat there. Clean. He wasn't really, his body wasn't going forward on that pass. Only five since 1900. Ray Ekman, Penny, Lester Towns, and Marcus. That's uh, that's amazing when you think about that over uh, you know, 100 years of, of Husky football. Cox to punt it away. Huskies come very close to getting it. To Ray Butler on the run and look out. Nice little move there. Butler still on his feet. Huskies will have great field position. Total domination by the Dogs today in Bowman. You're watching Apple Cup 2000 on Fox Sports Net. Huskies in command, they have the football on the Cougar 27. Marcus Tuiasasopo's work is done. Cody Pickett's gonna come in at quarterback. And Sonny Six Killer, he needed 185 yards to uh, move past somebody on the career passing charts, and he got 190. Ooh, that hurts. Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> I'm gonna take it out on his dad first. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, congratulations to Marcus Tuiasasopo. Uh, no, no kidding. Back-to-back 2,000-yard -back passing seasons, last guy to do it. Sunny six It's been a long time ago, I tell you. Your memories failed you? Yeah. Cody Pickett, 6'4, 200 pound, 10 pound freshman out of Caldwell, Idaho. His job to hand it off. Hasn't played a whole lot so far this year, son. No, he hasn't. <laughs> if you look at his stats, it'd be hard to find any, but he's a fine young man. I've seen him all year, practice after practice, and he has really uh, done the job. He's worked extremely hard. Uh, learning how to run the option a little bit, Cleet, and you know how that is if you didn't really do that in high school. And and 
being a backup because uh, you have to stick with your offense. If something happened to Tuyas and Sopo, you still have to run the offense, and he's worked real hard to improve his throwing and as well as his running. Dominic Dasky in there today celebrating his birthday. Pretty good celebration for his birthday. They've got an exciting little tailback in there right now, Sean Swag. Matt Rogers jumped. He's trying to say that the Cougars did it. <laughs> Point and pulled away. Now the defense doesn't call signals, do they? Do they, Cleve? They wouldn't do that, would they? Well, if they have, it's a little late. Yeah, I know. And then they've been calling the wrong ones. Lots of mats. In his final game as a Cougar, trying to milk anything and everything he can out of it. Again, the entire second team offensive line in there, the, the first teamers did pretty well today. Delay handoff to Sweat. Sean just keeps going, getting pushed by. Some of those big fellas, Nick Newton, a freshman out of Buckley, White River High School, trying to help push him along. Well, they're going to have a Huskies will need a little experience with his offensive line graduating the seniors that they are. Third and 11. You talk I was going to say, you talk about Kegel riding those horses, and here you got a Bronco buster here and Cody Pickett. Pressure as he gets it away, and it is knocked away by Marcus Trufant. And a nice job to hang with Terry Tharps. James Price is arguing with the official. I don't know what exactly it was all about, but he was right in the Jim Fogle Tan's face. And uh, not up there bumping him, uh, but pretty darn close. He might have got himself thrown out of the ball game. Frustration coming through, Marcus Trufant. Yeah, he's still gone. playing hard, but I, I think James Price is going to get thrown. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. That's not smart, obviously. It's not a factor at this stage That's of the game. But the goal. You had the Huskies stopped, and now they get a first down. Jim Fulton is so upset about the conversation that uh, he's a little confused about where the ball's going to be spotted. First down. Won't be half the distance from where the flag was thrown. <laughs> I'm not sure. Mike Price doesn't like to see that kind of action from his players. Still play hard. You don't make stupid mistakes like that. Been a long day for a lot of Cougars. Including that young man who could do nothing about this one, Jason Gessler. First down, Huskies. They took it from the line of scrimmage, so it is the 14. Flags fly. John Hart, the ball carrier that time. John Hart, number 35, carrying the ball. Looks like a flag. Last thing any of these fans want to see is another flag that stops the clock. Jason Gesser uh, trying to uh, remain positive on the sideline as a captain, and he's got to stick around. Otherwise, I'm sure he'd be uh, in the locker room. He'd be up in the library. Yes. Another penalty here, Cleet. This is just not what uh, the coaching staff would like to see from that Cougar football team. Nope, it's been an all ugly apple cup, uh, as, as far as my memory is concerned, anyway, from a Cougars perspective. So the dogs, first down and five from the nine. Tharps of the motion man. Sweat has the first down. Now he's a tough little kid. Sean Sweat. Getting chippy out there now. The fans reacting to guess what? Another flag. Exactly sure who the guilty party is on this one. Personal foul on the defense. Another one on the Cougs. The goal. First down. Oh, this is getting a little ridiculous, uh, Cleet. Uh, 
Well, Mike's sitting there just absolutely frustrated as all can get out, and this is not a typical performance. He thought his players might get up for this game, and it's been all Huskies. They have been steamrolled by a good football team today. First and goal dogs officially at the one. <laughs> the announcer after a series of penalties, and that's unfortunate. After all that, Huskies call timeout. We'll step aside, 9.28 to go in this one. Huskies 44, Cougs 3, Apple Cup 2000 on Fox Sports Net. Huskies with a first and goal just outside the one yard line. They already have 44 points, chance to get to the half century mark. Ken Walker's in at the fullback spot. Sweat getting his first carries of the season today. Chance to get his first touchdown here. Cody Pickett in at quarterback. There goes Sweat. And he'll be stopped. Ryan Long in on the tackle for Washington State. Also Al Genitone. Looked like Young Sweat picked the wrong hole to run through that time. <laughs> See the big Cougar standing there. I think I'd want to go the other way. Little counter action trying to get a misdirection. Jenna Tone. And Ryan Long in there in the hole. That's one. That's one time that the running game has been stuffed. And Ryan Long out of Anacortes, redshirt freshman. Played well for the Cougs down the stretch. He's a young man that'll hit the weight room over the, the winter and hopefully put on a little more strength and bulk. Yeah, being 6'7". Pickett runs that option and the Cougs make the tackle. Came up to stop Matthias Wilson, a sophomore. In his first carry of the year, couldn't get into the end zone. Chris Martin. Tackle there, took the legs out. Well, normally with a stat like that, they're going to fumble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah as, soon as, as soon as you throw that one up, it's a fumble is taken the other way. Looks like Sweat back at the tailback slot now. Cougs dancing around, trying to fill all the gaps. Sweat gets in with the second effort. His first touchdown is a Husky. John Sweat, one yard run for the score. Well, I tell you, he's worked his tail off on special teams this year, and it's a nice little payoff to come in in this game and be able to get a touchdown run. Nothing fancy, just blow it straight ahead, gets the block from, I believe that's Walker, and blows it on in. So Huskies once again, the prototype running effort. Anderson's been a busy guy. They'll try to get enough guys out on the field to protect him. <laughs> it's knocked off his steps. It's Jim Skursky actually, but uh, oh, okay, getting a chance to add a point. And he knocks it through. 51 to three Huskies. Back to Pullman in a moment on Fox Sports Net. Jim Skursky going to kick it off for the dogs. Knuckleball. 
We'll angle over towards the sidelines. Billy Newman was down. Slipped and picked up the ball while he was still on the ground. Been kind of the story of the day for the Cougs. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, this young man right here is a player to be reckoned with. Reckoned with. Billy Newman's had a fine year. Young man who was a running back in high school. Big game last week at USC. Matt Kegel still at quarterback. If the Cougars were to do anything different at quarterback, it'd be Paul Menke. Mike Price with the youth of Matt Kegel wants to get him as much experience as he can get. Throws it out to Menke. Menke trying to stay in. He'll get out to the 11, so the pass garners three. Well, there's been some big 50-point wins in Apple Cup games, and here you see a number of them in 1990, 91. We can remember those, and uh, today getting up there to close to a 50-point win. Well, that's not very many in how many Apple Cups have been played. Second down and call it eight for the Cougars. How'd you score 52 points in 1950? <laughs> that was the year they had that rabbit ball. <laughs> Took a page out of the baseball books. Minnick, a couple of yards for the Cougs. Well, Clint, if you're a Washington State fan, the solace you're taking this season is the fact that you look at the standings and the Cougs finished above USC. <laughs> That's about it. There you see the Pac-10 Bowl arrangements. Could be rose or orange for the Huskies. Oregon State most likely headed to the holiday, perhaps a BCS Bowl. Kegel pressured, he'll go down. Like Awesome had him back there chasing the young quarterback. I'm sure Matt Kegel. He had him and he got him. <laughs> he had him and he got him. Yeah, Matt Kegel's had a long afternoon and the Huskies uh, came out aggressively clean, really put it to him early and now still putting the pressure on. Cougars and Huskies alike. Happy to see that clock continuing to move as Alan Cox gets ready to kick it away, and the Huskies are going to end up with excellent field position again. Cox hits another good kick. Fair catch called for this time by Butler. He ends up taking a little shot by one of the <laughs> Cougars. There's uh, number 10 for those dumb old UCLA Bruins, but that's Rick Neuheisel throwing it deep there in the Rose Bowl against Illinois. Carl Durrell, his old coach. I believe that uh, Rick was MVP of that game. He's going back to the old stomping grounds. J.K. Scott going to get the opportunity to run the offense on this series. Junior out of Burbank. First down, Dogs at their own 45. Matthias Wilson. Even the officials letting the play string itself out before they blow the whistle. Yeah. They're looking at the clock also. <laughs> Huskies 19 yards away from a 500-yard day. See the particulars on J.K. Scott. Probably just handing it off on this cool evening in Pullman. Wilson again. Get about five yards. Set up a third and about four for the dogs. And there is uh, a name Husky fans will remember. It's uh, Ink Aliaga for the Cougars. Yeah, the Ink was a very fine linebacker for the Huskies. Clean. Brother Ink is a down lineman, defensive lineman for the Cougars, in on that play a little bit. He came back from a foot injury, missed about the first half of the season. Another one from the cold yeah. west of 
Honolulu. <laughs> Third and five for the dogs. And let Scott throw it, we'll see. Might not have to. Well, as soon as we uh, talk him up a little bit, he gets a flag. <laughs> While the officials sort it out, we'll take a timeout. All dogs, 51 to three. Apple Cup 2000 on Fox Sports Net. It was offside, Washington State, so first down for the dogs. And off to Wilson. And he'll get about a five or six yard gain on that first down play. Extracurricular activity continues. Looks like Todd Elstrom. Nope. Wandami Davis. Wandami Davis. Just trying to help his running back out, throwing some blocks downfield. <laughs> about 20 yards away from the play. <laughs> Make sure he gets a chance to get his pop in. Yeah. Well, the Huskies will take a little bit of time off for starting their preparations for bowl game, you'd imagine, Sonny? Well, they'll take a little time off. Who knows where they're going to end up? Uh, all I know is the awards banquet on Monday night should be a festive one. Wilson. Bounces out of one tackle, and he's still going. He'll get down about the 23-yard line. Matthias Wilson has won the Scout Team Player MVP of the Week Award this season, and now he's getting a chance to run the ball a little bit to show his ability. Husky fans sticking it out. Their band is partying up in the uh, the far end zone away from where the Huskies are headed. But having a good time down there. Whoops. Big Matt Rogers on the move again. And another penalty flag. Might be an Apple Cup record for flags in this game. Well, I don't know, but these officials are going to have some Advil for their shoulders. Ball start on the it's the offense, 26th penalty, and we've got a couple that were not accepted. on the sideline trying to get a little face time unable to get the helmet off in time <laughs> once again the Huskies grind one out John Hart nope I don't think that was Carruthers was it no it was a uh, cook uh, not even listed on the depth chart they're playing everybody today bud yes they are so SC with the win over UCLA. That really surprises me. See if the Bruins with that six wins total prior to this one will still sneak into a bowl game. Rick Neuheisel just got doused. <laughs> he's yelling high fives to the fans even though he's all wet. Matthias Wilson into a group and comes back out with the football. These dogs, these young guys want to get a chance to score. Boy, I guess. <laughs> it's got to be a little cold to get doused today, guys. Well, we're digging back into all the that's going to be a record. All the, all the press facts, and it uh, looks like this one, if these guys punch it in here, will be the new largest margin of victory. Not one that Mike Price is going to be pleased with. Nope, not at all. It's going to make the 
A little bit of a sour taste in the offseason, no doubt. Well, he might even take a knee. Classy move. That's what. Uh, that's a good call right there to do. They'll have to do it and perhaps twice more, depending on how soon the officials want to start that play clock. Now Rick Neuheis will send Matthias Wilson back in. That Gatorade's got to be a little cool down the back. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah, he's got that Cortex jacket on, though. Come on. Kept him dry. His hair doesn't look too wet to me. Still coaching. Play clock still hasn't started. <laughs> I don't think they're complaining, but yeah, no, the, the they finally just now. Oh, good. Now we get the delay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, official timeout. Dude. Yeah. Oh, well. well, even at this stage of the game, Rick is still keeping his eye on what's happening. They're breaking out the roses in the end zone where the Husky fans and band are. <laughs> fans boo because they have time to the clock. <laughs> <laughs> now that's bad. <laughs> That man right there, Marcus Tuiasopo, quite a career. There's been a lot of conversation about what if he had actually played more, if uh, he had had a chance earlier in his career, but biggest statistic on his side of the books is the wins. Bow down to him. Yeah, there's no question about that. His leadership, his character, his football playing ability, what he's see Steve Axman. I don't see Steve smile that much. <laughs> Finally let it down. Bobby Houck's done a great job. Young coach, Tarn Sublay, grad assistant, helping receivers. Mike Price on his side, uh, trying to console his guys. And All the seniors getting a big hug. Tough way to end a career. The Huskies will have one more day in the sun, and perhaps in Southern California. J.K. Scott will take an E one more time, and that'll be it. Congratulations to the Washington Huskies, Pac-10 champions, winners of the Apple Cup 2000. For Sunny Six Killer, Clint Casper and Todd Pickett, I'm Bud Damick. So long from Martin Stadium. The Dogs win it 51-3.